Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and welcome to the Game Exposed podcast. If you guys have a brief question on a narcissist and you want to submit it and have your question answered on the podcast, submit a brief question, you guys, no more than a paragraph because it won't be read. Um, Text your questions to 917-636-1109 and text me your questions and I'll try to get to as many questions as I can and answer them on the podcast, but please make it brief, no more than a paragraph, okay? 917-636-1109. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. Good morning. Today, I want to talk about narcissistic fathers, okay? I thought it appropriate to talk about narcissistic fathers today because today is Father's Day and a lot of people are feeling a certain way, especially if they've, you know, lived through having a narcissistic father or they've co-parented with a narcissist. So here's where I'm going to talk about, you know, I'm going to describe the narcissistic father and certain traits and characteristics they have and things to, so that you recognize when you're dealing with a narcissistic father. Okay. When you're dealing with a narcissistic father, a narcissistic father, a lot of times is head of the house. All right. This is the person that has complete control. They are the head honcho. They are the ones calling the shot. And especially if they're an overt, malignant, or grandiose narcissist. If you have a covert narcissistic father, they're more quiet. They're more passive aggressive. They don't really show their hand as being dominant, but they are dominant because they rule the house with silence and passive aggressive behaviors, okay? When you have a narcissistic father, you are going to feel like you're walking on eggshells because a narcissistic father only wants to see what they want to see. So they can be very critical, judgmental, tell you everything you do is wrong, okay? narcissistic fathers, people ask me all the time, well, do narcissists love their children? They care about their children, but the narcissistic father, and this goes for the mother as well, narcissistic mothers, they come first, okay? So although they could care about their children, narcissists do care about their children, some of them do, but the narcissist comes first, okay? When you deal with a narcissistic father, there's two sets of rules. Their rules and your rules don't mean anything, okay? So it's kind of like you're living in a house where, you know, you don't have say or you're put down and you're rejected unless you're the golden child that tells that narcissistic father everything they do is right, okay? If you're somebody who goes against the narcissistic father, then you're going to be, you know, scapegoated. You're going to be alienated. You're going to be isolated. Okay. Nothing is ever good enough for the narcissistic father. Okay. Now, I understand this, you guys, because I grew up with a malignant narcissistic father. So we walked on eggshells. And he ruled the roost. And when we used to have Father's Day, he had to be the center of attention all the time. If something wasn't right, he got angry about it, you know. And and the thing is, when you have a narcissistic father, not all the time, but a lot of times, the mother, your mother is the enabler of the narcissistic father. And a lot of times... The mother could be, your your mother could be a covert narcissist that also enables the narcissistic father. And it could go the other way as well. When you have a narcissistic mother who's very strong and who's the queen bee, the father can enable the mother to be toxic. And why, why do they do that? To coexist, okay? To coexist. Sometimes you could have two narcissists as parents, 
And sometimes it lasts. There's going to be a lot of friction. There's going to be a lot of battling. But some relationships do last with two narcissists because sometimes two narcissists align together if they have a common enemy. And the common enemy could be anybody. It could be one of their children. It could be somebody else. Or they just coexist because they need each other for something. Maybe they need each other for financial reasons. Or, you know, they just, they need to be, they need that validation from the other person. But when you have two narcissists, you guys, one narcissist is always going to have more control than the other narcissist, okay? And the other narcissist is going to have to kind of, you know, change up a little bit in order to get along with the domineering narcissist. When you have a narcissistic father, okay, one of the things you have to understand is when you go against a narcissistic father, they could write you off and leave you for dead, okay? And I remember putting a post up where I said, you know, a narcissist, they could leave you for dead if they get pissed at you or something like that, or you go against them. And I remember there was an influencer, a well-known influencer that put that post up and tried to refute that by saying, oh, well, narcissists, they'll never leave you for dead. They'll just keep coming back and coming back. And that's when I said, this particular influencer didn't know jack shit about narcissism when it came to families, okay? Because when it comes to families and you're dealing with narcissists, okay, it's very different than a relationship with a narcissist, okay? When you have a relationship with a narcissist, yes, 99% of the time they keep coming back, they keep coming back, they keep coming back. But when it comes to family and narcissism, it's a whole other ball game, okay? That's where you really know you know, that's where you could really differentiate who knows about narcissism around the board and who doesn't. Because narcissism in family is a whole nother, whole nother chess game, okay? See, narcissism in family, it's a different kind of dynamic because a lot of times narcissism in family, there's, there's going to be a, a power play, usually if there's money involved, If there's money involved, you could trust and believe there's a narcissist in that family that's vying for that money, all right? You know, that's usually your covert narcissist who's kiss-assing to the person or parent that has the money, okay? And when that, if that, let's say your narcissistic father has money, all right, that means that the people that kiss up to that narcissistic father are going to be okay because they're kissing up and the ones that aren't are going to be outcasted and sometimes left for dead, okay? Sometimes left for dead. When you're dealing with a very narcissistic parent, okay, they could be so stringent that if you go against them, they will never talk to you again, okay? Sometimes years down the line, you could go no contact with a narcissistic parent or narcissistic father, and they may try to have, they may try to hoover you if they're not doing well. Okay. But generally, it goes into, you know, where you're not talking. All right. If you don't follow the rules of the narcissistic parent, the narcissistic father, you will be outcast. You will be outcast and everybody else will outcast you as well because they will gang up against you. And why do they do that? Because they have to appease the head narcissist, which could be the narcissistic father, or if it's the other case, the narcissistic mother. And these other flying monkeys, which could be your siblings or aunts, uncles, or other people in the family will, you know, they'll show allegiance to the narcissist because they need that narcissist in the family, which is the narcissistic father or the narcissistic mother, if it's the other way where the narcissistic mother has control, okay? So it's it's very, very hard for a child that's a truth teller to be in a narcissistic family 
because a narcissistic father wants to portray an image that they have the perfect family. A narcissistic father wants to portray that he's a great father. And a lot of times a narcissistic father, and again, remember, this goes for the mother as well, could do this as well. A lot of times the narcissistic father tries to buy love with money, okay? Or he tries to make themselves feel like a good parent because they may buy you something, okay? They do this with their kids. They may do something financially for their kids. Let's say they don't see their kids in years, and then all of a sudden they send them a birthday gift, okay? Or they send them money on their birthday. This is so they could feel good about themselves and make them feel like they're a good parent when, in fact, they haven't been there as a parent. See, a narcissistic parent only wants to be there when it suits them or when it makes their image look good, okay? A narcissistic parent doesn't want to do the hard work. They want to leave the hard work to everybody else. They want to leave the hard work to the other parent that's involved or to the grandparents or to other people. That's why the narcissistic father will, you know, when it comes to parenting, they, a lot of times they don't want to be left alone with their kids. A lot of times there's got to be other people there, like their their their, their mother, their, their parents, or other people, or they have other people watch their kids so they could be freed up to go out and have their freedom. They don't want to do the hard work of parenting, dealing with children. Children are a lot of work. Children take patience. How do I know? Because I do it 24-7, seven, seven days a week. And it it's an extreme sacrifice. And especially when you are the one doing everything, okay? And the other parent is not doing what they're supposed to do it, or is not stepping up to the plate and doing what they supposed to do and making excuses. See, a narcissistic father is going to make excuses why they couldn't do things for the kids, why they couldn't sit down and do homework with the kids, why they couldn't take the kids to the doctor, why they can't, you know, drive the kids here or something. A narcissistic father is going to constantly make excuses to get out of those responsibility. But on the other side, a narcissistic father wants to be there when it's the graduation of the child to sit there and smile and, and make like, you know, they were the ones responsible for the child, you know, graduating high honors, or they want to show pictures, oh, this is my child, they went to an Ivy League school, or this is my child who got all A's, or this is my child that's an all-star athlete. That's why a lot of these athletes that never had a father in their life, all their lives, okay, once they make it and they become big, guess what? Their father that, that was never present for them all of a sudden wants to be, wants to know their son or daughter Okay, because now their son or daughter is famous and maybe they want to come into their lives again because they have money or they have fame. All right, because they're an opportunist. Now, all of a sudden, they want to know their son or daughter because their son or daughter is now has something to offer that narcissistic parent or father or mother if it's the other way. All right. So they are opportunists to what benefits them. Okay, see, here's the thing when it comes to parenting, all right? And, you know, this should go out to anybody who's considering being a parent because narcissists should not have become parents. When you become a parent, you have to be willing to put your children before yourself, okay? Because they are innocent victims that come into this world that you have to guide along the way, nourish and make them feel safe in order to have a healthy individual in this world. And so many people are emotionally unavailable and can't be a parent to a child. And this is why we have so many dysfunctional people walking around in this world. The, a, a big reason why we have narcissists and it's so you know abundant today. Yes, a lot of it is due to poor parenting. 
okay? People that were emotionally unavailable or they overvalidated their kid. They either undervalidated or overvalidated their kid and they have a child that come that grows up that is not able to regulate their emotions, is not able to validate themselves. You have a child that grows up very insecure, that has to put other people down in order to lift themselves up. This is your your classic bully in high school. When you look into a bully in high school, okay, just take a look at the family. Just take a look, look at the family of that bully. The family of that bully somehow had an influence on that bully and made them insecure. A lot of times when a bully's in high school, it's because they're trying to impress their family. They're, they're crying out for attention because they don't feel validated by their family. Maybe they were, I knew bullies in high school that their family, they, they were abused. They were abused by their parents. They didn't care and they abused other kids, okay? Or you have the other one that is maybe more of a gentle kid that becomes a bully because they're looking for their parents' attention or, you know, admiration or something like that. So the point in all this, I'm getting a little off tangent, okay? The point in all of this, you guys, is this narcissistic father, okay, is out there living their life. And a lot of the narcissistic fathers have a whole secret life that the the mother doesn't know and the kids don't even know, okay? The narcissistic father, nine times out of 10, has a secret life somewhere, okay? And you don't find out about these things till you get older, And certain secrets start to surface and they are exposed, okay? But understand this, if you're a a child of a narcissistic father, you don't need anybody to validate you. You validate yourself, okay? And you have to understand that your parent is damaged. You have to have radical acceptance in order to be happy and, and be okay in life and say, you know what? The problem isn't me. The problem is that I have a damaged parent that doesn't know how to parent, that is emotionally unavailable, that may be insecure and needs constant validation and attention, okay? And if you're co-parenting with a narcissistic, you know, father, all right, that's not there for their kids or only wants to be there for their kids when, for the good times, then you have to show your kids plenty of love without spoiling them. But as the kids get older, they will see who the toxic parent is because children of narcissists are very, very perceptive. And they may not see it when they're younger, but as they get older, they will see the toxicity. That's why later in life, it's so enlightening, especially when you educate yourself on narcissism and you say, wow, you know, my parent was so, you know, they used to blame shift, blame me for everything. Wow. My parent used to give me the silent treatment and and try to control me with silence. If I did something wrong, they would go silent on me to try to break me down. It was a form of emotional abuse where they would try to give you the silent treatment to shut you up so that you came back begging. Okay. They didn't know how to communicate, especially if they were a covert narcissist. They didn't know how to communicate with their children. So a lot of times, a covert narcissistic father would be sarcastic or be passive aggressive or try to put you down in a way to make you feel inferior. This is so they could have the control over you. And again, you guys, this is also for the covert narcissistic mother as well because narcissism doesn't discriminate based on gender. Okay, there's a little different, you know, discrepancies when it comes to mother, father, but narcissism as a whole is similar. So the thing is this, you guys, a narcissistic father is basically a dictator and how they dictate depends on the type of narcissist they are. If they're an overt malignant narcissist, they're going to be very upfront with it and you'll know they're going to let you know how they are and how that, you know, that everybody needs to follow their rules. But if they're a covert narcissistic father, they're going to play the victim. They're going to play the victim, but then they're going to try to control everybody else with that passive aggressive behavior. Okay. 
like a sarcastic and I, I've had this done with, with, you know, with the narcissistic father with my kids. All right. Trying to make, you know, trying to give them that onus and make them feel a certain way until they were educated and they, they were able to recognize passive aggressive behavior. And they were educated in the sense that they realized that they were trying to be controlled all right, try to be controlled by guilt tripping. See, when you have a covert narcissistic father, they're going to try to guilt trip you. This is what they try to do. They try to guilt trip you and make you feel like, you know, you, you know, they've done so much for you. You don't appreciate anything. So kids will constantly have those feelings of feeling guilty and trying to always please the covert narcissistic father. And the same goes for the covert narcissistic mother. Remember, it's across the board. So they will try to guilt trip their children. Oh, you never come by. Oh, I've done everything for you. Um, you don't appreciate anything. These are the things you're going to hear from the, nar the covert narcissistic father, all right? Or, you know, you, you know they'll, they'll nitpick about anything, too. When you have a narcissistic father, they're a nitpicker. They will nitpick about everything. Growing up, we got, you know, if the refrigerator door wasn't shut the right way, if the car wasn't in the driveway the right way, if food wasn't cooked the right way, if you rolled your eyes, why are you rolling your eyes, okay? You were always on the hot seat. But see, again, you have to look at the type of narcissistic parent you have. There's different, you know, subdivisions. Like I said, go study. And I've done videos on my YouTube at the Game Exposed podcast about this. The difference between an overt, covert, malignant, grandiose. And then you have a other slew of different types of narcissists like somatic and all the rest of them, all right? Cranial narcissists, everything, you guys. So, you guys, it's like this. When you have a narcissistic parent, nothing is enough for them. And you have to come into your own and have your own strength. And for me, the way that I did that was my, you know, my spirituality, becoming closer to God, because God always has your back when nobody else has your back. All right. That God, when you, when you're down, you become closer to God. When you become closer to God, you gain discernment. When you gain discernment, you are able to walk the right path because you walk in the truth. When you walk in the truth, there isn't anything a manipulative narcissist can do or say to you because you have your power, because nobody can refute the truth. So the point I'm trying to make is whether it's a parent or it's somebody else or it's a partner or whether it's a boss or whether it's a friend, you walk in the truth, okay? And you stand firm in that and nobody else can break you down. And a narcissist's goal is to break you down in order to feel superior. Yes, it's very true that hurt people will try to hurt other people in order to make themselves feel better and feel superior. But you know what? You don't have to deal with that. That's why you either go no contact or you gray rock this person. You have to know how to deal with different relationships in your life, okay? You have to know how to handle it. Not everybody is going to be your best buddy. Not every family is going to be, you know, the leave it to beaver family of love and, and happiness and everything. You have different dynamics of and different kinds of people in this world and you have to know how to handle them. It's like I said to my daughter, she was talking about one of her friends and she said something like her friend does this. I said, well, that's fine. I said, she's your friend, but just know what you can do with her and what you can't use certain things you can't discuss with her. She's not that type of a friend, but you could still enjoy her company but you just know that you cannot open up to this person. You cannot trust this person. You have to be careful, all right? But you could still enjoy her for, you know, just on the surface getting togethers. See, that's how you, you have to recognize people and recognize how to deal with people, all right? When you realize you're dealing with a very toxic person, you have to distance yourself and ignore the toxicity. Or if you have to deal with them, you gray rock them. But when you... Let me get back on, on point. When you deal with a narcissistic father, you guys, or even a narcissistic parent, you a lot of people go no contact 
And, you know, they're living their lives. A lot of them feel 100% better because they're not dealing with that toxic parent. But when you have a narcissistic parent, it is probably 100 times more painful than having a narcissistic partner. Why is that? Because the parent is the one that you're supposed to feel like that's the person that you run to when you have a problem. See, you can always replace a narcissistic partner, okay? You could have many partners in your life. You could even be married and divorced and get remarried. But a narcissistic parent is one of the most painful things that you will ever have to deal with, okay? Because you will feel alone. You won't ever feel like this person understands you. There will always be a disconnect, when you have a narcissistic parent, okay, whether it's father or mother, there will be a disconnect because they won't let you get close to them. It's it's their way of be, feeling superior. They will never ever be show or become too vulnerable with you and connect with you in that way because they don't want to give you that kind of power to make themselves vulnerable in your presence. They always want to have that, you know, a lot of narcissistic parents are old school too. You know, the old school theory is, you know, I'm, I'm the parent, I'm the parent, you know, you have to listen to me. I don't have to listen to your boundaries or anything. And some of them will let, even laugh if you talk about boundaries, like <laughs> boundaries, what are you talking about boundaries? I'm the fucking parent. You, you, you know, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. Okay. This is how a lot of them are. That's the old school, you guys, old school. They're the boss. It's their rules and you better follow them. And if you don't follow them, you are done. You are finished. They won't deal with you. And a lot of them won't talk to you for months, years or whatever. Okay. Some of them can leave you for dead. So that other influencer didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Cause I Obviously, he didn't deal with this. He was talking about relationships, all right? But I'm telling you from prior experience, I could talk on all this because I've experienced it. So understand this. When you have a narcissistic father, they're going to be judgmental, critical, put you down, and all of that. But you know what? You have to step back from it and you have to say to yourself, well, you know what? The problem isn't me. The problem is I have a toxic parent. So now I have to step back from that. And if I want to deal with them, I have to deal with them with kit gloves. That means gray rocking. That means not getting too close with them. That means touch base, happy birthday, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, and, and, and you know, happy Kwanzaa, whatever. And, you know, see you in 365 days to say happy, you know, happy holidays again. Okay. That if you even want to deal with that, but understand this, the problem isn't you. The problem is that your parent feels this need to be superior because they're inferior. And probably because your narcissistic parent had narcissistic parents as well. Okay. This is the generational curse. Maybe their parents didn't validate them. So now they're not validating you. Okay. So look beyond and you'll see a pattern there with your parent and the parents above them, you know, they're your grandparents and grandparents of that. And you'll see, you know what, this shit is running down from generation to generation because people either become their parents or they say, I don't want to be like that, these toxic people. I don't want to be like these toxic people. They're able to be super aware. Also, when people have narcissistic parents, okay, a lot of times they're very, the children could be very empathic, all right? They could be an empath or they could be a truth teller and, you know, they're always trying to please people. So when you're a child of a narcissist, you're always trying to please people or you're always apologizing all the time. Oh, I'm sorry I did this. Oh, I'm sorry I did that. Oh, I'm sorry I did this. You know, or they're trying to please people. That's because they've been beaten down by the narcissistic parent. But the problem with a child of a narcissistic parent that's an empath, they will become a target for a narcissist in a narcissistic relationship. Because if they come in contact with a narcissist that shows them love and attention, they will fall prey to that person. 
and feel that that person will be their security and their safety net. And that's what's dangerous about it because a a child of a narcissistic parent that's empathic is going to look for safety and security. Okay. How do I know? Because I've been there, okay? They're going to look for somebody's safety and security. And a lot of times these narcissists out there pretend that they're your safety net and your security net when in fact they are toxic as hell. They come in as your hero and they will leave as your nightmare because they're portraying the exact opposite of who they are, okay? So I'm off tangent. I just want to get into these narcissistic fathers and understand this. Let me get into the co-parenting real quick. If you're co-parenting with a narcissistic father, you guys understand this. They are going to be absent for your, for the child when you need them. A lot of them disappear. A lot of them ghost. A lot of them, you know, don't come and get the kids. A lot of them want to leave the responsibility on you. You have to do the best you can. But as the kids get older, trust me when I tell you, they will see what parent was there for them and what parent wasn't, okay? So, you guys, I'm running out of breath. I just want to wish all the fathers out there that are really there for their kids a happy, happy Father's Day. God bless all the fathers that are out there doing the hard work for their kids and are there for their kids and not just there when they feel like being there like a narcissistic father would, okay? A narcissistic father just wants to be there for the good times and when the kids make them look good, they they can post a picture on Facebook and, and tell everybody, oh, I'm parent of the year. A narcissistic father wants to be parent of the year or they'll post pictures of their kids. Meanwhile, they haven't talked to their kids in a long time because they were never there for their kids. All right. They, they only want to, you know, they're like the Toys R Us dad. They want to go and uh, buy them a little gift. But when the kid really needs them for the hard things, like sitting down and doing homework or being at a kid's sports practice at five o'clock in the morning, they don't want to do that shit. OK, they just want to do what's fun and makes them look good. So uh, it's hard on the other parent. And they also, narcissistic fathers, they also want to pawn off these kids on their parents or anybody else. If it's their weekend, they'll they'll leave the kids with whomever, their parents or somebody else so that they could be free. They don't want the responsibility. Do they care about their kids? Yeah, they could care about their kids. But remember this, they care about themselves first, okay? They care about themselves first. And they will hurt their kids by trying to hurt the other parent if they're going through a divorce. So they don't care that they're hurting their kids. All they're caring about is their vengeance for the other parent. And they don't care that they hurt the kids along the way because the narcissist is worried about their own selfish vendettas. That's the narcissistic parent or father. And it could go, like, remember what I said, it could go the other way if it's a narcissistic mother. So you guys, I got to run, okay, because I'm going to be interrupted. This is a high traffic house here, and I'm always trying to podcast first thing before, you know, the dog's barking and everybody's running through, okay? So have a great Father's Day, and, you know, like I said, have a great... and. I want to wish all the the fathers a very, very happy Father's Day. The fathers who are there for them, for those kids, and for the mothers that have to be a father and a mother to their kids, you are a warrior. And it goes the same way on Mother's Day for the fathers that are there for their kids when the mother is not around and you're dealing with a narcissistic mother who's also toxic and not there for their kids. It goes both ways. But for all those parents that are there for their kids, you know, God sees everything and God will, you know, reward those who have put themselves out and sacrificed for others. Okay. I hope that helps you. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube, the Game Exposed podcast on YouTube, because I'm really laying it down and putting out a lot of videos, you guys, about a lot with the covert narcissist. And if you want to follow my Instagram, it's the game exp123. Facebook is the game exp123. Um, 
Beware of any fake pages, you guys. That's not me. Don't follow anybody unless you, you check my links that I have here because there's a lot of people that try to dupe and fake pages, all right? So you may be following somebody else and it's not me. So always check and see, all right? It's the game EXP123 on Instagram and on Facebook. And have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that the Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp123 and also on Instagram the game exp123 okay and have a great day mm-hmm.